Well, you see, this car belonged to a housewife upstate. She hardly ever used, you know, just took the kids to and from school, picked the husband up at the train station. Believe me, this car is really underpriced. Well, take a look at the upholstery. Oh. It's hardly been used. It's like new. Uh-huh. Uh, well, listen, why don't you go inside, turn the motor on and see how it's out, and I'll be right back in a second. You go ahead. Hey, hey, get out of here, huh? Come on, give me a break. Go over to somebody else's lot. Quentin, telephone. It's Hubie. Says it's important. Uh, listen, we'll get somebody out to start it up right away for you. Just wait there just a minute. We'll get somebody. Talk to them, Harry. They're leaving. Lousy dead battery. Hold it a second, Yubi. They're gone. What is it, Yubi? No, I can't, Yubi. No, I said I can't. Well, then just bring it back the way it is, that's all. I'm sorry, that's it. Goodbye. Hot. It's supposed to rain. Where's it gonna end, Quentin? What? Is this the way we're gonna do business? Listen, Harry. Let somebody else turn the drums on those wheels. The car is not dangerous. They know they're buying a used car. So lay off. You want to play Boy Scout? You do it on somebody else's time. Maybe I should. I'm sorry, Harry. I didn't mean that. It's just that it's so hot. You need a rest, Quentin. Well, I'm going home. Nobody's gonna buy a car in the rain. So long, Harry. Quentin, do you realize you haven't been home at a decent hour one night this week? I thought at least tonight you'd make it. I gotta find a new gimmick. Maybe get rid of that old sign. Listen! I need to talk to you. I got another call about the furniture payment. And Tyler's teacher called today. He and two other boys did school. When he came home tonight, he wouldn't even talk to me. He'll be all right. I'll talk to him later. I'm just not in the mood. The good old family. You can always put them off. You know, if Tyler and I were a couple of used cars, you could at least drive us around the block every now and then to see if we're still running. We're falling apart, Quentin. The good old dependable family is falling apart. Catherine, look at me. I'm 42 years old, and I ain't making it. 18 years in this car business, and I ain't making it. And I don't know anything else. Somehow, I gotta make it work. You understand? I mean, somehow, I have to make it work. Quentin, sit down. You're tired. You need a vacation. Let me tell you something. I got a letter from Dad today. He wants us to come to the farm for a visit. 
out of the question, Kathy. I just can't spare the time. Well, Harry can handle it. Didn't your old man visit us last year for a week or so? Well, that was three years ago. We haven't seen Dad since Mama died. We need to be together as a family. Tyler needs it. We need it. Please. sure do favor your mother, Catherine. I know you miss her. Oh, I'm so happy to have you home, honey. Hi, Grandpa. Tyler! Well, is that you? Well, you sure have grown up into a big man since I saw you last. And that cowboy hat makes you look like a real cowboy. <laughs> it's the one you sent me. Well, I'm glad you brought it. I'm glad you were able to finally make it, Quentin. Hello, Jim. It's good to have you here. Uh, is that all your luggage? Oh, yeah, well, we can only stay a few days. Oh, well. Where's your car, Grandpa? Well, it's right out front. Come on, let's go, huh? Place got running water, Jim? Underground springs, sweeter than lemonade. <laughs> I'll get the bags. Dad, you kept Mama's sewing chair on the porch. Just waiting for you, sweetheart. I haven't sewn in years. Grandpa! What is it, son? Boy, it's beautiful. I bet you you could go about anywhere with this. Well, when she's running. You must have had it a long time, huh? Oh, yeah, since long before you were born, son. That long? Mm. <laughs> oh, boy, a swing! Uh, Tyler, could you come back here for a second? There's something I need to talk to you about. I want you to have a good time while you're here. There are a lot of things a boy like you can enjoy. Now, you can do just about anything you like, play with anything. I want you to feel that this is your home. But there's one thing I don't want you to do. You see that big old tree over there? Yes, sir. Well, it's got a very inviting tree house in it. But the boards are old and rotten. They've been there for a good many years. Now, you could fall and hurt yourself isn't safe. Now, I want you to promise me that you won't even go near that tree. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, go on then. Come on, let's go swing. Me too? Yeah! <laughs> All right. <laughs> it hasn't changed. <laughs> I remember Dad pushing me in that very swing. Brings back a lot of memories. Well, you're a big girl now, Catherine. 
I think I'll go inside and see if they've invented the telephone around here. Yes, Catherine? You're a big girl now. Okay, Tyler, now see if we can get this on. Put your head through there. There we go. Now one arm. You got it? <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's a good thing you don't have four arms, huh? I know. <laughs> yeah, good enough. Wait. Yeah, that's great. Okay, son. Hop in. Now then, this is a pretty old bed, and the springs are weak. So you better hang on tight, because when I get in, you're going to go right to the center. <laughs> I thought about getting some new springs, but your grandmother and I, we sort of liked it that way. I sure am having fun. <laughs> Me too, son. Good night. Good night. What are you doing, Grandpa? Saying good night to my best friend. Would you like to join me? I... I wouldn't know what to say. Well, you've never been at a loss for words around me because you know I love you. Well, he loves you best. He wants to know what's important to you. Just the way I do. Um, some other time, Grandpa. for him when she came after me hissing and honking. Nearly scared me to death. That goose is about the best watchdog a man ever had. You come around more often, she wouldn't think you were such a stranger. You folks missed the sunrise. Well, what are you waiting for, son? Come on. I'm come on, coming, I'll protect Grandpa. You. It's all right. Come on, Agnes, get out of the way. <laughs> Guess what? We missed the sunrise. I'd better fix breakfast. You know those whole wheat biscuits rival your mother's, Kitty. Thank you. <laughs> that was really good, Mom. Thanks. Are you finished? Yes, dear. I never did know how a man could get a good start in the morning with a cold bowl of popped sugar flakes. You know, that's uh, just what I was going to tell uh, Catherine. I might fix you a better breakfast if I thought you'd stay around long enough to eat it. When did I ever have the choice? Here we go again. Tyler. All right, that'll be just about enough out of you, young man. Help you with those dishes, sir. You must be lonely out here by yourself, with Mama gone. Well, it's... It's not the same, honey. Some days it's like... looking for your favorite slippers and finding one of them gone. 
But I'm not alone. You've forgotten, Kathy? Dad, we don't go to church. I know you understand about this. Quentin and I, our marriage. Honey, you don't have to be ashamed to share a problem or two. I don't know what to do. Quentin is so wrapped up in those cars, we hardly ever see him. Tyler's been having trouble in school. I think it's just a bid for his dad's attention. And I can't communicate with Quentin anymore. He feels like a failure, and I can't help him. He shuts me out. Hmm. Say, how's the car business? Puts food on the table. I grow mine. You know, Quentin, there comes a time in every man's life when he's got to take stock. Find out if he's doing what he really wants to do. side of the pasture. Uh, got a broken ladder on one of the water towers. You need a rest, Grandpa. Dad can do it. I'll help him. Oh, uh, well, maybe your Grandpa Oh, would... well, that's mighty fine of you boys. <laughs> Grandpa said we'd be there in no time. Oh, you know, Grandpa, he never goes by a watch. There it is! He's got to be kidding. I'll tell you what we'll do, Tyler. I'll put you on my shoulders and you can nail in the high ones. And then after, I'll do the low ones. Uh, well, Dad, why don't we do the low ones first, and then we can climb them to do the higher ones? Uh, well, yeah, we could do it your way. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I offered to buy your mother a dryer. <laughs> she always did prefer to hang them up. <laughs> oh, I'd forgotten. They smell so fresh. <laughs> Dad, you planned the whole thing, didn't you? Quentin, Tyler, the repair job. Well, uh, boy and his dad need to be together. <laughs> We really did need fixing. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. <laughs> we really fixed it good, Grandpa. <laughs> and uh, we made it in no time, Jim. <laughs> Aren't you exhausted? At home, you don't even want to go around the block. I know. Must be the clean air. Come on, let's go inside and wash up. You know, that kid is smart. Yes. Some change from the city, huh? Isn't it finished yet? Just a minute. Okay. Well, what do you think of it? You make a lovely couple. Seriously? No, really. He's, uh, he's very cute. <laughs> kind of uh, reminds me of Albert, my cousin. You remember? He wanted to marry you? Now, Quentin, Albert was not a bad-looking fellow. Well, he never did learn how to dress. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sorry you didn't marry Albert? Well? Catherine. <laughs> Radishes. Yuck. Isn't there anything else I can plant besides these? Well, sure there is. But I'm surprised at you. There's hardly more wonderful vegetable than a radish. Well, I'm sorry, Grandpa. I still don't like radishes. <laughs> well, that's all right. We'll, we'll plant something for you that you do like. Okay. Well, I'll get the hose. Ah, there's so many worms out here. I thought you said you were a country girl. You ever plant anything before? No. Some men just have a feel for the soil. Well, thanks, Jim. Tyler! No! She's afraid of a hose! I'll get her, Grandpa! Agnes! Come on, Agnes! It's all right! It's all right, girl.
are. Boy, a real frog. Hey, Agnes, you want to see something? <laughs> well, you wouldn't need them, would you? Come on, let's go show Ma. Remember a time when guys like you and I used to be friends. You know, these things really grow out there? Uh, would you like to go for a walk? Uh, <laughs> sure. Oh, these are for you. And this is for you. <laughs> Thanks. Wow, yours? Isn't he a beauty? Oh, look at those eyes. You know, if any princess had to had to kiss this frog, she'd welcome the chance. <laughs> I think we better take this prince outside, huh? Oh, Tyler, would you get that? Okay, Mom. We have a call from Harry Clark for Mr. Quentin Overby. Huh? He's He's not here. When do you expect him? He... Well, he won't be back here until... tomorrow. Who was that on the phone, Tyler? Uh, no one, Grandpa. Wrong number. Hey, lady. You've always been stuck on frogs? <laughs> always. Say, when you were a little boy, did you ever have the urge on a summer day to sit down and squish your toes in a muddy pond? Downtown Queens? <laughs> well, I went to school just a couple of miles down the road, and you could do that at recess. It's still there. I saw it when we drove in. Thinking of Tyler, aren't you? Well, I can't help it. I just hate to think I'm going to have to start worrying again every time he goes off on his bike. And it's not just the traffic, it's the sick, crazy things people are doing nowadays. Well, that's the way it is. You have noticed how happy Tyler is out here. Yeah. I guess I've never really seen him so happy. Boy, am I gonna get it. Hi, Agnes. You gonna be my friend? I guess you'll be just about the only one. I never should have done it, Agnes. It wasn't right. Grandpa will be so disappointed in me to think that I lied. <laughs> That might have been a real important call for Dad. But everything's so different out here. I never get to see him at home. We never do anything together. Of course, I don't want to leave you either. Well, you understand, don't you, girl? Do you know what it's like to live in the city? Sometimes. It's like living in a cage. How would you like to live the rest of your life in a cage? You do understand. Hey, what's this? Plums. Plums. Plums grow on trees, too? You bet. Wow. You know all about that, don't you? I grew up here, remember?
Kathy, I don't know how to say this. I'm sorry for all the times I've put the business ahead of you, Tyler. I'm... Uh, I must have jarred something loose. I don't understand it, though. We were running along fine, I hit a rock, and then all of a sudden it sounded like the 4th of July. What's the trouble, Jim? Well, I guess it needs some doctoring. Oh, let me <laughs> take a look. Oh, uh, <laughs> it sure is a pleasure to have you folks here, honey. Here's your trouble, Jim. Your distributor cap snap is loose. I'm surprised the thing was working at all. Well, let's see if it'll start up. Tyler, why don't you turn the key and push the button? <laughs> well, Bratton, you're a good man to have around. Uh, thank you, Tyler. Say, isn't this about the time of year you'd be sowing a summer crop, Dad? Well, there won't be any harvest this year, honey. I guess maybe I'm just getting too old. Sure is a shame, though. This land is just crying out to be planted. The place is lovelier than ever. We had such a wonderful walk. Didn't we, Quentin? We sure did, Catherine. <laughs> hey, King of the Mountain, what do you say? All right. All right, come on. <laughs> now, where's that poison ivy patch? No! Oh, yeah, we're going to the poison ivy patch. <laughs> Dad, um, I'll get it. No, no, that's all right, Tom. I'll get it. Dad! Hello? Yes, operator. Speaking. Harry! What do you mean? Of course I've been here all along. You said what? Well, I've been right here all along. What's up? She's <laughs> looking for a way out. <laughs> Tyler! Tyler! Get in here! I wonder what he's done now. That boy's gonna turn out all right, Kitty. You'll see. Come in here, Tyler. You know, I don't understand you. And what could make you pull a stunt like this? I leave the business, I take some time off so we can spend some time together, and this is the way you pay me back. No, Dad. What do you think your grandfather's gonna say when he hears about this, huh? I know. And what about your mother? You know, your mother's been telling me all kinds of problems you've been having at school, disobedience and things like that, and now this. This is an outright... This is different, Dad. You better believe it's different, Tyler. This is an outright lie. I mean, I almost lost out on one of the most important chances of my life. I didn't mean to do that. You're only thinking of yourself. You know that, don't you, Tyler? You have any explanation for it? Anything? I... Yeah, go ahead. Nothing. You just haven't been getting enough punishment. That's your problem, Tyler. Oh, 
Oh, no. Uh, I've got some business to take care of, Catherine. I'll see you later, hmm? I don't know, Catherine. I don't know. Go on, get away! I don't want you! I don't want anybody! Yes, he needed to be punished. But did you find out why he did it? Did you ask him? I tried, but... Something's wrong with him. He... He wouldn't talk to me. When he answered the phone and heard it was for you, he was probably afraid you'd have to go back. I imagine he was embarrassed to tell you how important it was to him. That must have been it. Sure. No wonder he couldn't tell me. I think that's not a way a kid should feel about his dad. Quentin. He adores you, but you can't make up for 12 years in a few days. Yeah, I guess you're right. Now, what did Harry want? Who? Oh, Harry! Uh, well, it's finally happened. The car life. The deal of our dream. Oh, what do you mean? From Harry? It's not Harry. Not Harry. It's Huchikov. I mean, Puchikov. Well, you know, the, the little guy who owns the, the, the call out on 8th Street. Catherine, hold on to your hat. He wants our lot. You mean we're going to sell it? That's right. Oh, that's wonderful. He wants to redo the whole place. I mean, make it as classy as his main lot. And guess what? He wants to make me the manager of the whole used car division. Well, I guess that's just about everything you've always wanted. Yeah. Such a hurry, huh? What are you doing here? Well, now, your old grandpa is always going to be where you need him most. You know, Tyler, this is no ordinary place you happened onto here. This place is so secret and so special that nobody, just nobody, knows about it. Except, of course, now you do. Well, what is it, Grandpa? Come over here for a minute. Let me show you something. Hmm? Right over here. Step up on this log. Huh? Show you this. Take a look. Can you make out what's written there? September 1st, 19... That's my birthday! Yeah. That was the first time I ever saw this place. Uh, I remember it real well. It was very early in the morning, and it was foggy. So foggy you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Your grandma and I, we knew it was about time. And sure enough, your daddy called all the way from the city. And you had just been born. <laughs> you know, those doctors back there, they, they weren't so sure you were going to make it. Really? Mm-hmm. That's when I knew I needed to find a very special spot where God and I could have a good talk. And I come back here whenever I feel the need. Well, God sure wouldn't listen to anything I had to say. I'm always getting into trouble. Oh, no. God loves people who are in trouble. And he loves to help them get out of it. 
You mustn't feel that God only loves the good folks. Well, Dad doesn't love me. Just because you got punished for something, that doesn't mean your daddy doesn't love you. Well, it's not because of that. I'm just not important to him, that's all. Oh, now, son. No, Grandpa. He doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> You have Tyler all packed? Just about. I hope I can make it up to him. You know, leaving this early. Well, where is he? Better get to that airport or we'll miss the plane. Well, he should be here. Come on in. That wind is whipping up quite a storm out there. I thought maybe I could help you get those things into the truck. Hmm? Thanks, Dad. Have you seen Tyler? No. I thought he was here with you. I'll find him. I hope this isn't another one of Tyler's tricks. We should know something in just a few more minutes. Thank you. Dad? I'm so sorry. Tyler. Look, son, I... Been awfully busy these years you've been growing up. I. I know I haven't spent enough time with you. Well, since we've been out here with Grandpa, I've been doing a lot of thinking. This whole thing is sort of my fault. Because I, I didn't understand the way you felt. I'm the one who's sorry, Tyler. For a lot of things. What I'm trying to say is that, well, things are going to be different. Doctor, how is he? Well, his hip is broken. And of course, that's going to take some time to mend. But. Other than that, I think he's going to be all right. As a matter of fact, he's, uh, he seems more concerned about everyone else than himself. He's asking for his grandson. Go ahead, Tyler. We'll join you in just a moment. Where is he, doctor? He's right down this hall. Come on, I'll show you. Thanks for that. You know, being out there on the farm, I began to understand something about time. 
I could feel all those years of tension falling away. And I realized there's nothing more important than spending time together as a, as a family. Sure I am. I've just been living with Agnes so long, I, I, I just thought that I could fly. <laughs> well, it's my fault you were hurt, Grandpa. Can you ever forgive me? I... I think I could forgive you. <laughs> oh, I love you, Grandpa. I love you. Well, how long before you'll be all well? Dr. Mason says that I have to spend some time in a convalescent home until these old bones knit together. I know how hard it'll be for you not to go back to the farm, Jim. Oh, Quentin. <laughs> My happiness doesn't come from that place. It springs deep inside. Anyway, I have enough good memories to keep a room full of men smiling. And besides, God may have somebody in that convalescent home that needs cheering up. <laughs> now, that sounds just like you, Dad. You know, folks, I've been lying here doing a lot of thinking. There's something I need to talk to you about. All of you. Well, what's that, Grandpa? Well, I got a proposition for you. Now, I'm, I'm going to be laid up for a while, and I... Well, I... I like to speak plain. Quentin, I need a partner for the farm. Now, when I get better, and that could be sooner than you think, I'll be right back out there again helping you. But we could do the winter seeding together. But I don't know anything about farming. Oh, well, farming's just as natural as breathing. Used to be everybody was a farmer. What you don't know, I can show you. And the land, the land can teach you about a lot of things. Well, I, what do you say, Catherine? Well, I don't know. If we sold the car lot, we would have a pretty good nest egg to start with. But I want to do what you want to do. Well, uh, if I did accept your offer, I think it would be only fair to invest in some new equipment. Well, not that that's not a real good tractor you have there. Oh, <laughs> that tractor's in the same shape I am, about ready for retirement. Well, what do you think, Tyler? Oh, Dad. Well, what can I say? After all, who's going to take care of Agnes? Oh, you're the most wonderful dad in the whole wide world. Well, Catherine. It looks as though we... we had a harvest after all. 